Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a supermarket for all of your city building needs. And not only will I show you how to make the entire outside of the build, but I'll also show you how to make the entire inside of your build as well in part two. If you enjoyed this tutorial, ladies and gentlemen, all I ask is that you please subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that little bell next to the subscription button. That will ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. And when you're ready to make part two of this video, simply check the card system, description below, and the top of the comment section for part two. You'll be able to find it nice and easily. This is part one. Part two will show you how to make the entire inside. Without any further ado, let's get started. So, just before we get building, everybody, here are all of the materials that we will need to make our supermarket. Please do make sure that you have access to all of those materials and enough of them as well. The amount of space required to make the supermarket is a 32 by 27 block area as represented by the white concrete grid on the ground. Do feel free to make this grid in your world if you do feel as though it may help you out. And that's it. Pause the video if you have to. Make sure you got all that stuff. Make sure you got enough room to make it. Make sure you're ready. And once you are, we can begin. Step one, supermarket builders. Come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid. If you've made it. From the front left hand corner of the grid, you want to count backwards. One, two, three, four, and five. This is where we're going to kick things off. Place eight red concrete on top of each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're then going to extend to the right by five. One, two, three, four, five. In addition to what we're going to do, which is extend this fifth block all the way down to the ground, what I would also like you to do is just extend the first initial row of eight backwards also by five as well. So one, two, three, four, five, and you can actually extend the entire row. We're actually not going to be doing much with this row until later on, but trust me when I tell you it'll be quite helpful that that row is there. So we just want to have this kind of shape. And continuing on from where we sort of left off, which is connecting this red concrete down to the ground, I want you to extend backwards by two using your red concrete. One, two. We're then going to extend across to the right from the red concrete with a black concrete, to which you can then extend upwards by three. One, two, three. You then want to extend to the right by three. One, two, three. And you can join that third block down to the ground. And now that block has been connected down to the ground, I want you to take the block that we connected down and extend it right by an additional four. One, two, three, four. And then you can connect that block down to the ground. We then want to take the block that we connected down and extend it right by an additional three. So that's one, two, three. And then you can connect that down to the ground as well. I want you to place a red concrete in front of and to the right of the row of black concrete. You then want to extend the red concrete upwards by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it should be extending over the black concrete a little bit. But something that we also have to do here is we have to then extend the red concrete to the right by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we want to extend it backwards by nine as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're then going to connect it all the way down to the ground. We're going to take the block that hit the ground and we're going to extend left one, up three, one, two, three. And then what we want to do is extend this block around forwards and then around the front to kind of give us this shape right here. It kind of looks like a really weird shaped F sort of that kind of connects to itself. Maybe I'm the only one that sees that. I don't know. But so what we now want to do is add another row of red concrete just here on the front left of the store to mirror what we did on the front right. And then we want to place rows of black concrete extending inwards diagonally on both of the inside corners of the red concrete like this. They just want to sit one block backwards. We want to extend the tops of the black concretes inwards each by three. One, two, three, and one, two, three. 
We're going to join them both down to the ground. And then we're going to extend the tops of those inwards to join together. And it will just sit perfectly in this little space that we have right there. Now, when it comes to the lower space, you can actually destroy underneath all of these black concretes here, and you can join them all together using black concrete, so just creating a very simple line. You can place glass in between them all, and this is just going to be a really nice modern feature for the store. I really like this sort of effect right here. It's, it's a classic sort of design tip for modern buildings. Looks really, really cool. When it comes to the above part, we actually want to be able to place a sign here. So just in this above space on the left side, connect the left side top to bottom using some red concrete. You then want to place one, two, three, four, five, six rows of yellow concrete, just kind of like dividing the space up a little bit, just up above. And then the rest of this area can completely be, be filled in with red concrete, as that yellow concrete area is where the sign is going to go. And whilst we are focusing on just little details here and there, this is the entrance area that we have um, the, the rest of the black concrete. So I want you to join the left and right sides together, the black concrete areas together in the ground. I want you to join them together using black concrete. And then I want you to fill the left and right side windows in using some light blue glass pane. The middle area here is a doorway, so you can actually place a vertical row of light blue glass on the left and a vertical row of light blue glass on the right. And in addition to this, I just want you to add a couple of rows, maybe just like one, just one row of actual red concrete will do, just on the inside left part. And then what, what I essentially want you to do is grab your terracotta and place two entire rows of terracotta on top of the black concrete of the entrance. So this is what we will end up with. We want to then extend the top of the entrance forwards, the black concrete area forwards using well, your black concrete, and you want to extend it forward so much that it overhangs the left side of the build, which is the most outward part well, previously outward part of the build so far. When it comes to this left side area, we want to have a little sign in here as well as we do over there. And we want to place a row of horizontal blue concrete just underneath the, uh, just underneath the top of this left side. You want to place, going from left to right, two yellow, one blue, one yellow. And you want to do this two times, so you want to have this kind of dividation. And then you want to place light blue concrete underneath, and then you want to just fill underneath in using your red concrete. And you'll end up with something that should look exactly like that, which is really nice. And, and that's pretty much the storefront, and that's a lot of the detail done in regards to the actual building. What we're now going to do is flip over to this right side here, and we have a lot to do. So I want you to grab your terracotta, and I want you to... From this red concrete area, place a terracotta, like extending inwards and towards the back of the build, and extend the terracotta upwards by five. One, two, three, four, five. It should just sit below the red concrete. We're going to extend the terracotta towards the back by three rows. One, two, three. And then we're going to join it down to the ground. I want you to place a, a, a row of terracotta just underneath the top here, like this. And then I want you to place a little bit of glass pane, very small design feature. And then I want you to fill the rest of the area in with terracotta, resulting in this. I then want you to grab red concrete. And I want you to place a red concrete extending outwards diagonally from the end of the terracotta. And the red concrete wants to be eight rows high. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So prop just about... Actually, it is as high as the building actually is right now, anywhere. Uh, we then want to take the top of this, extend it backwards by five rows. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to extend it across the back also by five rows. So like one, two, three, four, five, like that. You can even extend it inwards if you like and join it to the uh, like the opposite corner to kind of form a square. Although it's not going to follow that same pattern all the way down. But what you can do is fill the like the outer side 
inside in here where the terracotta is and you can fill the back part of it in. Although there is going to be an entrance back here which we will be adding a little bit later on. That's much more of an interior part of the build though, whether, he, whether it is you even want to add it or not. A lot of places do have uh, different ways to enter and leave though, but the doorway I do believe, I don't want to get this wrong, would actually be like dead center. So if you do want to slightly prepare for that, that is where the doorway would be. We're going to grab the terracotta. The terracotta is once again going to be placed inwards and diagonally in relation to the red concrete. We're then going to extend the terracotta all the way over to the right and it is going to connect diagonally all the way back to the start of the build which is why we placed that row of red concrete ages ago right at the start of the build so that we could literally just connect it right there. Planning. What we are now going to do is take that entire row of terracotta and extend it upwards by five rows. One, two, three, four, five. And that's about as high as the terracotta is ever going to go. So as you can see, once the final wall, and this is a long wall, once it is added, we will majoritively have completed a large amount of the structure. That doesn't mean to say that there isn't a lot more that we do have to do in terms of just prettying up the place, adding a few details here and there. But the base structure of the supermarket is, uh, is pretty much, if we take a look at this thing from like this angle, it's, it's pretty much done, right? Very nice job. So now, literally, as I mentioned, all that is left is for us to add some details to it. The first thing that we're going to do is figure out where the roof is. And it doesn't take much figuring out because I know where it is. Basically, where the terracotta is at the back of the build, one row down is where the ceiling inside of the supermarket is going to be. The ceiling is made out of terracotta. You're more than welcome to change it, by the way. So, the ceiling made out of terracotta wants to extend through the entire roof area of the build. And it'll actually make it a lot easier once you have placed this to kind of like connect down all of the 3D colourful structures that we have placed around everywhere. So, if you just add the terracotta ceiling in the roof, um, it's not a fault ceiling, um, the ceiling is the roof. So, like, when you go inside, this is how much headspace you are going to have. So, again, if you don't want to have terracotta as a ceiling inside of your building, which is more than understandable, some people might not like it as a as an actual, like, roofing material you maybe you'd like a little bit of gray gray would work quite nicely as well so you know light gray just actual gray maybe some smooth stone although i don't quite like the texture of it for roofs um any sort of like cyan terracotta would work you guys get the idea so you're more than welcome to change it of course um however it ultimately it is a personal decision so it doesn't really matter exactly what you use as long as you're happy with it and what we want to have should look exactly like this. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the entrance area here and we're kind of just going to join it together on the roof. So this red concrete here, we don't want a sloppy looking roof. We're going to join the red concrete around. We're going to turn it into a solid shape and then we're going to add an inlay of... Maybe we can even use light blue. We're going to add an inlay of light blue at the top of this particular part of the structure. So anyone that may be looking down, which is very possible, will see that. And it's quite nice. And we're going to have the same thing at the back here. Except we might use a different colour just to keep it a little bit different. Literally, the only reason that anyone would ever see this is if they were messing about on the roof. Which I um, wouldn't recommend. You might fall off. Or if uh, you place this in such a way that um, people will be able to see the top of it. So why don't we fill the top of this one in with yellow. And it'll just look a little bit better. I mean, for those that actually do get to look at it from like a bird's eye view, it'll be like, huh, how about that? So, I also want to add a row of red concrete behind the sign area, which is going to have market written on it, by the way. That's, just in case you were wondering, that's what's going to be written there. And that just looks a little bit better like that. I'm not going to join that together in the solid shape. I actually quite like it like that. On the roof as well, that's right, there's more. Uh, on the roof, we are going to have a couple of like uh, air vents or I don't even know, like AC, like just some stuff on the roof pretty much. Um, it's going to be placed in the upper left hand corner of the roof. You're going to leave a gap uh, around it and you're going to place one, two, three light grey concretes and then one, two, three to the right. Gap of one, 
do the same thing. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And then just another one, gap of one, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, just like that. And then we're just gonna place some rails around the top of them just so that it looks like some sort of electronical or air vent or again, you know, whatever it is. And this is just for people that will be able to see the top of the roof. Now, in between these, we actually wanna create a skylight. The skylight starts from the bottom right hand corner of the first um, vent thingy and it extends across and it joins diagonally to the other one. It wants to be that wide and it wants to be six rows long in total. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, why are we doing this? You may be asking. Um, there is some plants underneath here which uh, would benefit from some natural light. So we're going to place glass uh, block in here and it also creates a little bit of variance. So it's, uh, it's just going to make this particular part a little bit lighter and brighter and uh, it'll also just provide light for uh, some of the crops that we're going to be growing in there. And it just looks a little bit better, right? And honestly, I mean, that's looking pretty good so far, what we have there. I'm, I'm very happy with what we've done so far. So the next thing that we are going to do, I think that we will focus on the little garden area to the right. So I don't usually do this for supermarkets, but I wanted to on this occasion. I'm gonna grab lime terracotta, green terracotta, oak leaves and oak wood. It's pretty much all we need for this. So the little tiny garden here is going to start on the right side of the building, extending from the back corner of this red concrete. We're gonna place one, two, three, four, five leaves extending backwards or what actually might be better is if you dig in the ground one two three four five and then if you dig backwards and basically the garden just wants to line up with the back of the store so where the red concrete is here and i'm going to place green terracotta in these spaces and then i'm going to place some oak leaves on top see there you go looks a little bit better um, i'm going to have some trees these are going to be made out of oak woods and we're going to place one two two oak woods um, we'll leave a gap of three between every tree and then we'll have pretty much like just um, a set of three trees. Um, if you place a row of one, two, three, four lime terracottas on top of every single tree, you could even vary them by the way. You could even uh, have like the top part can be green terracotta and then you could use some, um, uh, I mean the, the middle part can be lime terracotta and then you can use some green terracotta to fan the trees out at the bottom. You could also use actual proper trees as well. I'm, I'm just using fake ones because I'm creating a different um, gradient of greens in in this area if uh, if you uh, haven't noticed so like we've got ju just instead of using the same green we've got the grass we've got the oak leaves we've got the two different types of terracotta and I think it just looks kind of cool um, it's just a, it's a stylistic point of the build it, it, it doesn't really matter what you exactly do with this area if you don't want this part then feel free not to add it I'm going to grab yellow concrete and I'm going to grab smooth stone for this next part. I'm going to dig around the entire rest of the area. So basically where all of the white concrete was or is and, and then is going to become was, I'm going to dig out all of the rest of the remaining area of our supermarket and I'm gonna turn it into smooth stone. This only applies for the outside part. I'm actually not gonna be doing it at the inside part. And also, round the back, I'm, I'm gonna be doing it too. Um, as I mentioned, there is a little entrance back here, right? So I'm just gonna dig out all of this and I'm just going to turn it into smooth stone. And that, ju that just applies back here. It's just so that people can walk around yeah, th there's so many different ways that you can integrate a supermarket into a city. Um, it doesn't necessarily even need a car park or anything like that. This is a very standard supermarket. It's literally like, it's, it's rather small. Uh, it can just slot in your city in a city center. It can, if you wanted to, you could add a rather large car park to it. Um, I've made a few supermarkets sort of recently. I think I've, I've made at least two large ones. I've made Kmart and Target and I've made more in the past. Um, if you wanted to lift one of the uh, one of their car park areas from the tutorials, meaning kind of just copy what I've done previously, if you want like a big car park and surrounding walls and stuff, then you're more than welcome to do that and then apply it to here. It's just, I kind of wanted to make a, a pretty simple supermarket that you could just add to a city center if you wanted to. Or if you did want to modify it, I think it's pretty easy just to make a car park really. I mean, um, a car park is pretty much nothing, but it doesn't even need walls really. But you, you could, but basically all I was gonna say was a car park's pretty much nothing but walls and car parking spaces. And sometimes it's not even that. So, you know, 
d depending completely on how you want to use it, then you, uh, you'll you be able to use it if, uh, if you're inventive enough. So this is pretty much most of the landscaping that we have to do for the outside of the build so far. We're not really going to have to do too much more. Um, we're actually coming towards the end of this rather rapidly. Um, I want to use some bollards, so some yellow concrete just around the outside of the market. And uh, they're basically going to be placed as such on the front left hand corner of the boundary. Going to leave a gap of two, yellow concrete. Gap of two, yellow concrete. Gap of two, yellow concrete. The entrance is there, so I actually want to leave a gap of three to mirror the width of the entrance, and then I want to place a yellow concrete. So gap of three, then gap of two, yellow. Gap of two, yellow. So on and so forth until we actually reach the outer boundary. And um, it should actually line up perfectly. So just like that. Um, you don't really have to have this extending to the back. I think it might actually get uh, get in the way of what I actually want to add. Um, I want to add like uh, just a trolley area or shopping cart area. That's um, iron bars, oak fence gates, cauldrons. And it's a very simple little area. It's pretty much going to be placed like... Um, I th well, probably about here, just like one row away from the garden here, and one row away from the road, or maybe it'll, it'll just sit next to the road, but one row away from the garden, and we'll just place like a row of one, two, three, four, five should do, extend the ends towards you, probably about one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, divide the area in two, like this. And then you can just place a couple of shopping carts. Now these are cauldrons. Uh, if you place an open fence gate, any fence gate behind a uh, behind a cauldron, just open like that, it will look like a shopping cart, uh, a basic shopping cart, but a shopping cart nonetheless. And you can just kind of stack them like that, and it uh, actually looks as though somebody uses them, which is kind of cool. Like uh, one's missing. So um, I'm thinking, would it be would it look silly to have that? Hmm, I don't know. I don't like it. Um, you, you can add the bollard, so if you want to, around the side of the build. Now, the most dreadful part of this build, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that there is a, a rather large, extensive collection of signs. Uh, I don't like doing signs very much, but um, I I'll do it for you guys. So I'm going to place a set of yellow banners, not in the top left-hand corner of the, uh, the inventory area, but um, kind of like one row inwards. I'm going to place the white die up there as well, and the yellow die. I'm going to grab my loom. If you don't have a loom, I'd either get one or you've got to use a crafting table. Uh, we're going to chuck one down, can even get rid of it. We're going to crack open said loom, and we're going to start this thing off. So, um, there's two signs. There's one over there, that's going to say 24-7, and then at the yellow sign is simply going to say market as in supermarket i don't think you have to write the word super um so again crack open the loom and we're going to start off uh, literally we're going to do it in order so it's going to be two first and we need to load the loom up with some white dye uh, so two's dead easy horizontal row of white uh, dye along the top horizontal row of white dye along the bottom and a diagonal row of white dye bottom left corner to top right corner will emulate rather well a two Grab a new banner, chuck it in, and we've got to write seven. So seven can actually, uh, we've got to write four actually, my bad. So four is a little bit trickier in that we've got to place a vertical row of white dye along the left side, chuck the uh, banner in, put white dye in there, make the lower half of the banner uh, yellow dye. Uh, we've got to put yellow dye in there instead of the white and we make the lower half of the banner yellow. We grab that new banner, take out the yellow dye, put the white dye back in. We place a horizontal row of white dye through the middle and then we place a vertical row of white dye along the right side. So that is 2, 4, 24. There are two ways to make seven. The first, but they start in the same way though. So we need the white dye back in there and we need to place a horizontal row of white along the top. And then one can either place a vertical row of white dye on the right side or you can use a diagonal row to create the seven. I'm going to use the vertical row because I like to stick by the rules. <laughs> uh, now we have to make M. M is a little bit tricky. We want to place a brand new banner in the middle of the table, and we want to create this kind of like cut, this kind of like diagonal cutout at the top of the banner. You guys know the one. Uh, we're going to grab the new banner. We're going to place it back in the table. We're going to chuck yellow dye in there instead of the white, and we're going to do this to the banner. 
um, kind of like the little jagged rock formation sort of thing to the banner. We're going to grab that, put it back in, get rid of the yellow dye, put the white dye back in, and we're going to place a vertical row of white on the left side of the banner and a vertical row of white on the right side of the banner, and that will be M. Things get a little bit easier from here. So the next banner is going to be A. This is going to be a vertical row of white on the left side, vertical row of white on the right side, horizontal row of white along the top, and a, ver and a horizontal row of white through the middle, and that will be A. Uh, the next banner is going to be R. Uh, it's a horizontal row of white along the top, it's a vertical row of white on the left side, and then it's a diagonal row of white top left corner to bottom right corner, and then that will be R. Uh, the next banner that we have to make is K. So K is rather easy as well. It's a vertical row of white up the left side, and then it is both of the diagonals. So top left to bottom right, and it's also bottom left to top right, and then that will be your K. Uh, the next banner that we have to make is an E, and this is a very systematic, easy one to make. Vertical row of white up the left side of the banner, and then horizontal row through the top, horizontal row at the bottom, and then a horizontal row through the middle. Very simple. One of the easiest banners out of all of them to make next to the T is... Uh, or next to the seven is T. Uh, T is a horizontal row of white along the top, and then we have to have the vertical row of white straight through the middle. And believe it or not, once we've done that, we've done the sign. Very nice. So, starting off, literally going from left to right inside of the yellow concrete positions that we've kind of laid out. 20, four, seven. There we go. M, A, R, K, E, T. Boom. Really nice. So that really does just take the little sign just to the next level. I really like how that looks. And the next and only thing, the last thing that we're actually even going to be doing in here, and um, it seems as though that I don't have the material on me, which is my bad, but I'm, I'm certain that it will be in the material list, is we're going to grab the terracotta and block of quartz. So first, we just have to clean up some of the walls inside of our supermarket. And to do that, it's very simple. Between all of the windows and stuff where you can see the red concrete, we're going to turn it into terracotta. That's it. So we're just going to smooth the walls. And for some reason, the lighting is not so smooth. Um, I don't know why, but whenever you like, um, whenever you mess with anything that like afflicts the light in Minecraft, uh, in the version that I'm playing anyway, um, you get kind of like these awful jagged shadows like flash across the screen. But you you can see that we just want to smooth that wall out. It's very easy to do. Um, you only have to do it there and also here as well. So here, just like that. Very, very simple stuff. Just make the wall nice and smooth and terracotta. And that will get us ready for making the inside in the next part. So that's looking really, really good. Um, the only thing that I'm going to be doing now, and this is where we're going to see a lot of the jagged stuff, I do believe. Um, maybe not as we're doing this now, but maybe as uh, we do it, uh, uh, as I fill it in, just like there, you can see anything. Like, I, d I don't know why I keep getting these weird flashes of shadows. It's ever since the update. Uh, the foxes have came with some problems. Um, so basically, I'm just going to rip up all of the floor. I'm going to turn it into a block of quartz. Uh, that is all I'm going to do. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen. I'll rip up the floor. I'll turn it into block of quartz and I'll also get rid of all of the numbers and stuff outside and I'll show you what this thing will look like because we are effectively done ladies and gentlemen well done for getting this far the only thing that we will have to do is the next part of the video which is going to be a separate video so let me show you what everything will look like once it's all cleaned up and we have a floor in so this ladies and gentlemen is what your supermarket will look like once it has been 100% fully completed we have the entire outside side of our supermarket done, including the little garden, the shopping cart area, all of the signs, the entrance, the windows, and on the inside now you can see that we have a nice big blank empty canvas so that we can start the interior in the next video. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you're new around here and clicking that little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. If you would like to make any more city related builds or any builds in general, check out the card system, the description below, the top of the comment section. I would highly recommend the City Builds playlist though. It has a huge 
variety of stuff and a weird variety of stuff as well it's not all the same sort of thing it's, it's got a complete weird mess of stuff in there that i'm sure that you guys would enjoy picking through and uh making stuff from thank you so much for watching though guys i appreciate all of you very much and i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye <laughs>